How many of how many for how many of y'all does that take you back to some memory or some experience? Yeah. Um, I want to start with it because it's a song that uh, takes me back to my first year in university. That's where this song. Whenever I hear this song, and nowadays I hear it too, too too infrequently. So radio stations, y'all, please play this song. Um, it takes me back to the bus uh, or the shuttle I used to take between uh, Cabot House, which is the dorm where I used to work, to, um, to, to soccer practice. And the reason I want to share it, because it takes me back to a time when um, it was the first time in my life when things felt, I had that experience of, this is so hard, I just might want to quit. I just might want to stop, right? This is so hard, I don't know if I can sustain this for another three and a half, four years, right? And it's also a time which I'm deeply grateful for. Now, at the time, I was doing three things that were new to me, big to me, and challenging to me. I was my first year at university, trying to stay, you know, trying to adjust to the rigor of university, trying to keep my head above water, trying to thrive if I could, trying to prove myself capable with the rigors that I learned of university. The second was I'd walked onto a soccer team, and I was the only person who everyone else was sort of on scholarships and recruited for playing soccer, and we used to train 25, 30 hours a week. And it, always, it, was, it was important to me to be able to prove myself there, too, and believe that I could actually make this and stay, and that was important to me. And the third thing was work. I said I was taking the bus from work to, to soccer practice, and I was working you know, 15, 20 hours a week uh, cleaning bathrooms, cleaning the bathrooms of the, dorm, the dorms, the student dorms, because that was the highest paying job for students on campus. And I, I, whatever time I had left for that, I was going to make as much money as I could to be able to support myself. And it was hard work. I mean, it, was, it, it is not easy as a first-year freshman uh, to, to make that your job to make your job cleaning the bathrooms of your, of, your, of your classmates in the dorms and then going off to college uh, to, to soccer to try to compete. I remember being in, that, in that, um, that shuttle and after, uh, like, after each afternoon of two or three hours of cleaning bathrooms just feeling like, man, this is tough. This is exhausting. Like, I've got to cut out one of these things, but I can't cut out any of them. Um, can I do this for the next three and a half years? And um, it's a moment when this song, it always, for some reason, it must, it must have always, it always seemed to come on on the shuttle. And I would just, it just lift me up and I'd just be ready to say, you know what? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I will. I will try. And it's always been an uplifting moment, an uplifting song, rather. And I said, you know, it's, it was both a really hard time, and there have been many more hard times, of course, times of stretch, when I'm stretched far beyond comfort, uh, just shy of despair. <laughs> almost at that point, but really stretched and really having to, you know, test the stamina of my conviction and the work that I'm doing on whatever it is I'm striving to do. And what I've come to uh, feel and come to, to grow to feel and grow to realize is just to be deeply grateful for that year and for those times, right? And so today, the theme of Changemakers uh, is really around overcoming. And what I'd like to really share is around, um, re a message really around being grateful for those tough times. Right? Being, having gratitude and benefiting and valuing them. And in fact, um, not just being grateful for them, but seeking them out and creating them by doing something challenging. Right? To actively seek out and create the challenge and the stretch. And I want to connect it to how we think about what we're doing as schools for innovators and leaders as well and over Pioneer. But I don't think it's a, it's a message just for students. I think it's a message that continues to play in my life and hopefully has resonance for all of us as change, change makers. Um, there's something I believe um, about, about purpose, first of all, as a starting point for this. Um, I believe that at the intersection of our passions and problems worth solving lies purpose. I have, uh, I can recall in my early sort of coaching a lot of and mentoring and coaching our early young professionals who have been constantly asking the question like, what is my purpose? How do I find purpose? And this has always been my answer. And the answer is that you've got to find a way to cultivate, passion, cultivate your passions and apply those to problems worth solving. And this informs how we think about learning at Nova Pioneer as well. There is a, a, a book written by, or there's a gentleman, a prof professor at the Harvard Graduate School of Education's Project Zero called Tony Wagner. And Tony Wagner wrote a book uh, called Creating Innovators. And in this book, he, um, he, he basically did a biographical study of a range of people who are doing innovative work across a wide range of industries, different points in their careers, early career, mid-career, late career. And what he did was try to see what were the influences and the progressions in their life that led them to actually taking on challenging, innovative work and thriving at it. 
And what he found was a progression, a progression from early childhood of play and discovery through teenage years and early adulthood of cultivating passions, discovering those passions through that play, finding I really love this, I can, I can thrive with this, I can work it, I can commit myself to it, and then applying those in life to problems because the problems are infinite, <laughs> the problems with solving, and if you cultivate a source of passion, then the problems to solve with it become much more apparent and cultivating those to, to and th that passion becoming purposeful, right? So he had this, he, d he sort of articulated and has written a lot and spoken about this progression from play through passion to purpose. And certainly in my life, um, I found this deeply resonant. I found this re really resonant. That every time I have sought out a path towards cultivating passion, every time I've made a choice to step towards passion, I've discovered opportunities to really live those out in purposeful ways, and I found, better, found myself better at them. Um, one time, I recall, is um, being, I remember um, my, my first job out of college, before I taught, uh, was with a dot-com company. And that's sort of an internet, an internet company that's, that failed marvelously. <laughs> failed, you know, tons of money, tons of ideas, and very little outcomes. And about 30 months later, it blew up. I went off to New York, and in New York, I, I, and I was staying with my aunt and uncle at that point, and I needed to find, find myself, get on my feet again, find myself again. And um, so I took a job. I took a job doing database consulting. Uh, really interesting work, uh, far from what I hoped to be doing. And I remember there was sort of, I was tw at that point, maybe it was in 22, 23, and just feeling like I was, I, would, I was in a small apartment in Brooklyn. I remember the kind of apartment where, you, you know, you roll out of bed, you're in the kitchen. <laughs> you step to the left in the dining room, you know. You open the door, that's the bathroom, you know. And that was it. And it was winter time, so it was dark most of the time. So it'd be dark, I'd go down, I'd get in the subway, I'd get up, go to the office, spend all day. Next time, maybe I'd go out for a slice of pizza. Otherwise, I'd be back in the subway and I'd go to work and I'd be back in my apartment. And I was like, man, this cannot be life. I remember thinking like this, I, I, feel, like a, like I feel like a cow in a herd. You know, I sort of said, mmm, sort of, <laughs> sort of like how I felt about the time. I was like, this can't be it. And I remember calling a mentor. Uh, and I, I remember calling a mentor, uh, and a former teacher of mine, and saying, um, Paul, this, isn't, uh, this is what I'm doing. I feel off my path. I'm, I don't feel like I'm really working what I ought to be working on. And he said, um, uh, well, what, what is it you care about? What do you want me doing? Well, I said, I'm, I've, ever since I've been 13, I've known what I, what I wanted to do. I, I can remember the day when I was 13 on a playground and said, man, if one day I get to be part of building great institutions back home in Nigeria or on the continent back home, I would, that's what I want to be doing. What I care about, what I enjoy, what I get, what I, what I, I read fast. I read stuff on learning. I, anything to do with youth, I'm there. It gives me energy. I can, I can read those things quickly. I can do them well. When I'm database consulting, I'm reasonably bright. I work hard but I'm pretty mediocre if I tell you the truth. But when I do the things that I really enjoy doing, man, I feel, I, I feel I can be great at them. And I feel sources of energy coming from them. So I care about young people, I care about education, I care about sports, and young people through sports, I care about all opportunities to allow young people to develop, and all of us to develop, uh, develop a sense of I can, right? And so he, long story short, he convinced me, he said, he said, well, why don't you come teach, learn a thing or two about teaching, learn a thing or two about education. And well, I, made that, I made that step. I went from working 3x, at 3x what I was working, to, to a third of x, and in that transition, uh, figured out quite quickly that I, um, that I took a step towards my passions. Had I not taken that step, I absolutely wouldn't be doing and be able to live in, my, to live in the mouth today. Uh, there are multiple paths of times along the path when I've had to make that transition from really an op whatever I was doing towards stepping towards passion. However, what I've discovered as well is that that's not enough. That simply articulating purpose, saying this is what I'm passionate about, and this is the problem which I want to solve with it, is not enough. It requires something else. And what I think it requires is, and what I've found it requires, is perseverance. These three things really inform the challenge we put forth our students and the challenge we put forth ourselves. When I say perseverance, is if we're going to go from aspiration to possibility, or from intention to impact, it takes sustained action. And it's going to be hard. And not only is it going to be hard, there's no guarantees, right? There's no guarantees in, in this in working hard. I've discovered that. But two things are, are for sure. Two things are for sure. The first is if we don't act, if we don't take that leap of faith, if we don't take action, and if we don't sustain that action, we won't. So one thing that's for sure is if you don't, you won't. That's for sure. The second is that if you do, and if you sustain it, you'll get somewhere. 
And only we get somewhere if you'd sustain it, even in the face of failures, that you will get somewhere that you want to be, or you will die trying, <laughs> right? If you never give up, you'll succeed, in su you'll succeed or you'll die trying. And frankly, either of those two things you can be proud of, right? There's an amazing quote that both haunts me and excites me and inspires me. It's a quote by Horace Mann. He says, uh, be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. It's a fantastic quote. Now, I think if you're striving to win a victory for humanity, you don't have to be ashamed to die. You can be proud of that. But you're guaranteed that if you strive, if you persevere, one is you will get somewhere, and if you don't give up, you'll get somewhere that you want to be, right? So that's part of our message of how we think about sort of transition to how we think about things with developing young innovators and leaders at Nova Pioneer. And so, um, well, I'll skip this. The, the, um, the, the world clearly is, is littered with leaders who have only succeeded because they've persevered, right? And the, 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 the examples I, 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 I skipped through there were examples of, um, of Paul Ma, you know, Asia's richest, uh, uh, richest man at 38 billion who was turned down from a job with the police, turned down from a job at KFC, rejected not from Harvard not once but 10 times, <laughs> and said, okay, I'm going to go start something else. Or the author of Harry Potter who decided that who, 13, who's built a $650 million uh, empire that has, that has produced the book that is on my daughter's, my seven-year-old daughter's bedside that we read to bed each night and that shaped a whole culture. But 13, 13 years ago, uh, was destitute, penniless. She was rejected by 12 publishers, and each time didn't have the money to, to, produce the, to reproduce the manuscript by printing it or by editing on computer. So it literally typed it out, 90,000 words, 13 times until the 13th publisher, the publisher accepted her manuscript. And of course, this country, which, whose history is built upon leaders whose perseverance is testament to the power of perseverance, whose work is testament to the power of perseverance in the pursuit of something purposeful. In fact, it's just about the only thing that you can be guaranteed of is if you're pursuing something purposeful, that is hard to do, it will be hard to do and will require perseverance, right? But if you do, man, the rewards are amazing for yourself and for society. So we are schools for, for schools. We educate uh, uh, children in primary, preschool, primary school, and secondary school. And, so, and, and our mission as Nova Pioneer is to develop uh, innovators and leaders who will shape the African century. We say, we want young people who will shape the world, not just work in it. Who won't just take a CV and say, could I have a job, but will actively work with, work with others to solve problems towards meaningful pursuits. And so we spend a lot of time thinking about how do we do that? How do you build a lifetime in which young people can discover, can cultivate passion, apply to something, problems that are worth solving, so it's purposeful, and then build the ability to persevere in the pursuit of those things, right? And the first part, the cultivating passions to apply to purpose, uh, I, I, will spend, I won't spend much time on. I, I just want to wrap up by really focusing on that last part, how to build perseverance, right? So the last part is, the way our, our thought on it is, is constantly challenge and get young people to do purposeful, challenging things, right? At the core of that perseverance is cultivating, is really two things. One is, if you're going to persevere, you've got to do two things. You've got to say, I'm going to take action. I've got to take a leap of faith to say, I'm going to strive towards something that's meaningful and hard, right? And if you, uh, and you're going to have to be able to continue in the pursuit of it when it's hard, when you are on that bus and you're saying, I can't keep it up, right? you are going to have to be able to persevere in the pursuit of it. And so if you're going to do that, you require some self-belief. And so Nova Pioneer, our, and then throughout, this is, uh, applies generally, is we want to cultivate experience where young people are learning to cultivate that sense of self-belief. And that is by one, taking on challenging, challenging goals, taking the leap of faith to say, I can, and I will, and in the face of, in the face of difficulty, still persevering. Now, um, I've... Uh, rush through a little bit around how we think about it as a school, and it's a message for our students. It's the core of what's, how we want to be different. Too, many, too, many, too much of our education experience is about learning what we can't do, right? I'm not a mathematician. I'm not an artist. I'm not a singer. I'm not... Fundamentally, what school ought to be is a place where young people learn that I can, that I'm fundamentally capable, and that I can apply that sense of I can to whatever it is I want to be doing. It's transferable. It's not fixed to I can do math. It's I can, dot, 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 you fill it in right, with your life. And it's a message that's not just applicable to students, 
but I think to all of us. I'll close with a story of uh, a young man named Tumi. Tumi is actually not his real name because I want to, I want to protect his identity, but it was while I was working as a management consultant uh, prior to starting Nova Pioneer. And I remember he was part of a leadership program in which he um, was all his peers. It is a two-year leadership program, and all his peers uh, had gotten jobs that they were going to be doing at the end of the program. But six months before, he didn't have a job, and we had an off-site. And Tumi didn't want a job. He wanted to be uh, an entrepreneur. He said, I want to start something. But he was scared. He was, he was rigid with the fear of it. Rigid with the, man, I've got an option. I could just get a job. I could be a consultant. I could do other work. I could just, the safety in that. I could, I have obligations. I'm a family. He had, he had a micro, he was a, um, he had got a, a BSc in microbiology. He's highly trained, highly skilled, highly sought after. There was a safe and easy, easy path and a lot of expectation on him. And yet he wanted to go start a company. And I remember that offsite, him literally uh, breaking down, crying in the paralysis of, I don't know if I can take that leap of faith, if I have the courage and believe in myself enough. I remember saying, you know, can you just articulate, say I can do it? He's like, I just don't know if I can. I just don't know if I can. And here's someone who has presumably met with success throughout his university days, throughout his school days, because he's he'd been to South Africa's top universities. He'd, got, he'd earned his BSc in medical biology. He'd been to this top consultancy, and he was learning on this leadership program. Um, but to me, and, and I say this because this is not just a student experience, this is one for all of us. To me, took that leap of faith. Um, to me, started his business. Uh, five years later, it's been hard. It's been hard. He's had to do things in an industry where he is not the norm, where he's had to break barriers. But in five years, he's built a really successful business, right? And uh, he only did it because he was willing to take that leap of faith to say, I can, I will, and persevere through the struggles that have come since. Um, thank you.